His words are spirit. We have to remember that. His words are spirit and they're life. Wherever the word of God is put, it'll bring life to a dead body. It'll bring life to a dead situation. It'll bring life to a dead marriage. It'll bring life to a dead to a, to a dead animal. We, I've raised my cat from the dead three times. I know what I'm talking about. Confirmed by veterinarian science. Confirmed by medical science. A dead cat coming back to life. Matter of fact, when it was time for my cat to be put to sleep, it was 20 years old, it was just plain old. And, and I, I laid my hand on that cat all night long because it had a stroke and its three legs were paralyzed and it didn't get healed. I said, Lord, why not? He said, I promised your cat a long and healthy life. And that's what I prayed for. So I took it to the vet to have my cat put to sleep. Because, you know, no cat wants to live. It can only move one leg. It just doesn't work. And here I go to the vet. True story. Go to the vet. The vet takes out the shot. They, they give an injection in the heart. And my cat sits up. <laughs> I mean, their legs didn't work, but it sat up and looked. And she started getting nervous. She said, you don't understand. Those shots are enough to put out three, three big dogs. And so she takes another shot. And she, before she injected my cat, she said, this is enough to, to put to sleep two full-size horses. And injects in my cat's heart. My cat's still looking at me. Well, now this, this veterinarian starts crying. Because she says something's wrong. And she just put another cat to sleep before mine. It was the same bottle. And she finally gives another one. She says, this is enough to put a couple of horses and big dogs and everything. She actually just filled a whole big giant syringe. It was a horse syringe. And my cat's still looking. I said, Jesus, what's going on here? He said, you, you prayed that my cat, your cat would live. He said, I can't release it. He said, let me, if you'll release, I'll let him go. And I looked down at my cat. And my cat looked up at me, and, and supernaturally, you see, the love of God comes through animals. That's how God pours his love to us, through animals. Some of you may not realize that, but a snake can't love you. Isn't that true? A lizard doesn't love you, but God pours his love through animal stuff. The God kind of love, you get a dog, you can kick a dog, cuss it, scream at it, and it's still going to love you. Isn't that true? That's why God does that. So that cat looked up at me, and I looked at it, and I said, Flash, that was his name. <laughs> he, he caught 12 mice in one hour when he was only something like uh, eight weeks old, so I named him Flash. I said, Flash, do you want to go? And some of you may think I'm crazy, and I could see in his eyes he did this. He just looked at me, and then he licked me on my nose, and I could see in his spirit that he, he was tired. And I, and I said, Lord, I release Flash to you. And she gave him another injection. I said, give him, give him the normal size injection now. The flesh passed on. And that got saved. See, God's word is spirit. Are you listening? His, and he'll honor you. I prayed years ago, Lord, don't ever let him go until it's time. And I had to tell the Lord it's time. And we've stood over people's beds that were dead and brought them back. Some of them were, were dead. They shouldn't have left and God brought them back. I was in one town. We had a man that was dead. They were going to take all of his organs out. And, and they were ready to, to do an autopsy, take everything out. Because he was brain dead for six months. And uh, I snuck in there and prayed the man, raised him up from the dead. But I walked into that room. The man had tattoos all over him. He, he, he had nasty tattoos, you know, lightning bolts all over him and spark plugs over his eyes. Just, and I looked at him and I said, you deserve what you've got. I said it out loud. The man said, he can't hear me, right? Jesus said, you don't know what spirit you have. I didn't send you in here to condemn him. I sent you in here to raise him. Are you listening? So I said to that man, I said, listen, I said, I know you can't talk, but your spirit is eternal. It'll never die. It's a candle that'll never go out. And I said, you're going to die in just a few moments and be in hell. Unless you ask Jesus Christ into your heart in the next few moments. I know you can't speak with your mouth, but you can with your spirit. I said, unless you do that, you're going to be gone. Well, the administrator of the hospital comes walking in, caught me in there because I snuck in there. You know, this is all sterile. They, they don't allow people in there because all the organs and everything are sterile. They had to make sure they don't have to take someone's heart out because it could be disease. And, but for us, this, this administrator of the hospital was healed by our ministry. She was dying of terminal cancer, and the Lord completely healed her. So she caught me in there, and I said, well, I didn't want to go through the chain of command. I didn't have time. I have to get going, and I didn't want to go through all these people, so I snuck in. She said, well, don't, don't let anyone see you. But a few months later, I'm back in that area. She stood out in the rain for, for three hours, her and her husband, waiting for my wife and I to come out of our prayer closet. And she said, do you remember that man you prayed for at the hospital, the one that was 
brain dead, and they were going to take his organs out. I said, yeah. She said, six, excuse me, 30 minutes after you left, he got up, put on some clothes, and went home. <laughs> see, his word is spirit. You can't be moved by what you see. You have to be moved by what God's word says. Are you